Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. I have so many questions about these lessons that I am teaching. And these lessons are, what happens to a person when he dies? Or, what happens to my body, soul, and spirit? Is there pain in death? There is completely a different situation for a believer and an unbeliever. As a true child of God, we're absent from the body and present with the Lord because we have His Spirit. You see, this is the most important lessons because people do not realize that you have to be born again by the Holy Spirit. That is divine conception. That's what we are learning in these lessons. But if you are not born again, you cannot go to heaven because this is the Spirit of God that carries you into heaven. Your body goes back to dust from where it came. So when you're born in this world, every person that is born in this world is born with a soul and a body. And we saw, and we have to repeat these because everybody says they've never heard these before, the body of man touches the material world through the five senses. The soul uses the five senses of the body as its agent for its self-expression and communion with the outside world. So your soul, you have imagination, these are the gates of the soul. You must write these down. Imagination, conscience, memory, reasons, and affections. You have a soul. Everybody has a soul. But if you die without Christ, without being born again, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So your soul then goes to a place of torment when you are not born again. Your soul goes to a place of torment. You cannot go to heaven unless you have divine conception. This is why these lessons are for you today. It doesn't matter how many t gods you worship. There is only one true and living God. That is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the whole Trinity. You cannot worship until you have a triune Godhead worship in spirit and in truth. This is how you have to have the Spirit of God before you can know these lessons. So what does the Holy Spirit, now what does the Spirit of God, the spiritual faculties, the Spirit receives impressions of the outward and material things through the soul and the body. The since faculties of the Spirit are the spiritual faculties of faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. You have none of these until you are born again by the Spirit of God. The problem is 
after, now this is what happened to fallen man when Adam sinned. Every person is under the same death penalty. Condemnation means you are condemned to die because of Adam's sin. But Jesus Christ came. He knew before the foundation of this world that he was coming to this earth to seek and to save those that are lost. And it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And this is why people must understand, as a child of God, you're absent from the body and present with the Lord. We're going to learn these lessons today. You see, this is why the natural man cannot understand spiritual things. He cannot understand them until his spiritual nature has been born again. And this is how we receive the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is the most important person of the Godhead because he dwells in us. He doesn't have a body, but he dwells in us. God's divine nature is within us. And I am born again, but he can't work apart from the word of God. This is what's wrong with the world. Believers think when they are born again by the spirit of God, that's all there is to it. But you must live by the principles that this book has for you. When you get through with these lessons, you cannot ever be lost because these are the word, these are the truth. The word of God is the living word. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against any person that receives this book. These truths concerning our eternal life eternal life. This body is for this life. The second born, the Spirit of God, when I'm born again the second time, then that is eternity. That is forever and ever. This is the great joy that we have as believers. And I pray today that you will ask God to open your spiritual eyes to understand these truths. We praise him for bringing us together today, that we can worship with him in spirit and in truth. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly rejoice in thee and we thank thee for thy word, the great conviction of the word of God and the spirit of God. And we are praying that he will go forth today to every person that hears this under great conviction that their spiritual eyes will be opened, that they may behold wondrous things out of thy word, and they will be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan under thee. And we're praying for one hundredfold, and we're rejoicing in what thou art going to do today. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So as we think about these lessons, here's loved ones depart. This is how, this, I mean, loved ones depart. Every person knows this. But God will never leave us. God will never leave us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. As we read this Bible, this word of God, throughout the day, we should never get up and live through the day without reading this book. That's our spiritual food. We turn from our own grief to a fuller appreciation that the Son of Man also endured sadness, loneliness, and pain. And he went that final step. You must write these down that we will never take. He suffered and died alone for our sins on that cruel cross. Just to know this is enough for people to praise the Lord and rejoice in Him, that He died instead of me alone, 
My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me in Psalm 22? Psalm 22, we see this wonderful, wonderful prophet that was to come. In Psalm 22, I see John 10, 11. You see, we can't say Psalm 23 and put my in there and all of the pronouns that's in there unless I know the Savior of Psalm 22. The, he says in John 10, 11, he is the one that went to the cross to die for us. This is his way of telling us that he is going to die. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. After I'm a child of God, nothing can change that. He is the good shepherd that giveth his life for the sheep. This is Psalm 22, the good shepherd. Psalm 23, he is the great shepherd. And he is our priest today. In Psalm 22, he's our prophet that was to come. Psalm 23, he's our high priest today. And we see this in Hebrews 13, 20. This is the wonderful truth concerning him being our great high priest today and nothing can change his word. His word never changes. Hebrews 13, 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. This is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You can say that after you become a child of God. And then Psalm 24, we see he's the chief shepherd. He's king. He's going to reign as king. And this is in 1 Peter 5. And when 5, 1 Peter 5, verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. Not only did he die for me, he died instead of me. He's praying night and day for me, and he's in heaven today preparing mansions for us. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. You see, there is no fear for a person that goes to the gates of glory because we go into the very presence of the Lord. So we see he's the prophet. He is the priest today. There's no priest for the church. Jesus Christ is our great high priest. And you must know this and you must pray to him because there's no other person to pray to. He's a living God. He's living and he's praying night and day for us. So this is the wonderful Savior that we know is ours. So what happens when you die as a child of God? First, there are many partings in life. Never once are we promised the joy of long continuance to gather here. But our gathering together unto him is a certain joy. You see, everything he has for us is the very best. That's our joy. He says in 2 Thessalonians 2, 1, our gathering together unto him. You see, when he went back, we, the disciples saw him go to heaven. They saw him being taken up in a cloud. He said, this is the greatest joy. He said the two Angels that came, he said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. You see, he, there is nothing in this life as a child of God that will cause you to be, feel lonely, be sad, or ever, ever be depressed, or ever have fear or ever fret. And if you've been following my lessons, you have seen the worry-free life 
that he commands us to live. So here I have now this wonderful promise that he's coming again and he's going to meet us in the clouds, every true believer. So we see in 2 Thessalonians 1, 2 Thessalonians, and you write these verses down, you study them, and you will have the greatest peace for any person that has ever lived on this earth. But until you know Christ, you have no peace. 2 Thessalonians 1, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because it, our testimony among you was believed in that day. You see, you must believe. Believing is what saves you. You have to believe that Jesus died on the cross for you and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, I'm going to go through this with you. And if you can understand these truths, you can be born again today. You have to know these truths. That's the only way you'll ever get to heaven. And there will be no fear in death for you because this is what Jesus did. For God so loved you, you put your name there right now, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is where I become a child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Because Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned, see sin cannot enter heaven, and come short of the glory of God. And come short. No person in this world can get to heaven any other way except through these truths that I'm giving to you today. And but as many as received him. You see, you have to receive him. He's a gift. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. This is how you can know your child of God. And you will never have fear in this world. And this Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. His word cannot lie. His word cannot lie. So here today, now I'm going to ask you a question. Do you know these truths? And he says in 1 Thessalonians 13, uh, 1 Thessalonians 18, he says, now this is for you today. Listen, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Then verse 13, now this is 1 Thessalonians 4. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep or which have died, that you sorrow not, even as others that have no hope. You see, that's why you need to know the spiritual faculties of the Holy Spirit. This is the only hope that you have. You don't have any hope apart from the Holy Spirit. You do not have any faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And you cannot pray because you can't call him Father until you're born again. And then he tells us, now I have showed you this many, many times, but this has to go along with this lesson. And if you're worshiping other gods, right here's what he tells you to do. You have to turn from these gods to serve the true God and to wait for his son. You see, you have to turn from them gods because they are just gods. And God's word says they are dumb. They have eyes but can't see. They have mouth but can't speak. They have ears but can't hear. So they, he says, and if you worship another God, the first commandment is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. The second, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. So I am to worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall I serve. And he says, if you worship another God, in Psalm 16, 4, that your sorrows are going to be multiplied. And see, for us, 
we have the peace that passes all understanding. So here's what he tells us in 1 Corinthians 4, 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. Now this is what we're going to hear. We're going to hear his voice. We're going to hear the trump of God. And we are going to be raptured to be with him. And the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So here we see the dead in Christ. Those that have been buried, their bodies will come out of the grave. And when we reach the speed of light, we are going to have a body of light. And that is 186,244 miles per second. We go into eternity. And this is what he has promised to all of us. But if we should today, he should come and we're living. But those, this is us. But then we which are alive shall be caught up together to meet them in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. How did he go? He went in a cloud and he's coming back. So what happened? You know, and pe for people that don't believe these truths, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Now, this is through faith, Enoch, before the flood. And this is in Hebrews, of course. This is God's hall of fame, people that live by faith. He says in Hebrews 11, verse 5, For by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He pleased God for 300 years. He lived to be 365 years old. He went to heaven before the flood came just like we believers are going to be taken before the seven year tribulation period comes. And if I don't get through this all this time, I will give you these truths and you will never doubt that you're going to be raptured and you're going to get the Bible verses on these because this is what's important. Elijah went to heaven in a chariot of fire. That is the angelic host. It tells us that this was the angels carrying him into heaven. Now he went to heaven. And this is a picture of those of us that are going to be raptured to be with the Lord. And we're not going to die. Moses, when he died, and they were both transfigured with Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration, God buried Moses. Elijah was on the Mount of Transfiguration with Christ, showing us that those that went to heaven without dying, we are going to be with Christ. And then Moses, he was the one that Moses was there, and Moses was the one that God buried him. And here they were with Jesus, and Jesus' body when he was on the earth, Peter, James, and John saw him. His body was as bright as the noonday sun. Now, for those that don't believe this, God shows you this in the book of Revelation. And I will show this again because this is one of the greatest truths for people that doubt God's word. In Revelation chapter 11, there were two prophets that God kept on the earth to be a witness and a testimony for him. So the Antichrist kills these two prophets. And, ever, and it says in verse 7, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast ascended out of the bottomless pit, that is Satan's abode, and shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. They laid in the streets of Jerusalem for three and a half days, and they would not allow anyone to bury them. 
And they sent gifts to one another and rejoiced because these two prophets had died. They were blaming the prophets for all the things that had happened to them during the seven year tribulation period. And this is almost hell on earth. This is why you must be born again today so you will be saved from that. And then after three and a half days and the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood up on their feet. Now this is in Jerusalem. The whole world sees this and fear, great fear fell upon them all. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. This is for every person that doubts what God is going to do. You can't doubt God's word and receive any good thing, because he can not lie. This is the living word. Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. As I study these truths about this wonderful message of what's going to happen to every true believer, we can know that God is in complete control and every word that he teaches us is for our glory and peace that passes all understanding. This is the greatest story that's ever been told. When Jesus Christ came to earth as a baby, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. He was on this earth for 33 years. He went to the cross to die for us, stayed on the earth for 40 days, ascended up into heaven in a Shekinah glory cloud, and he says he's coming back the same way to take us out of this evil world. You right now can know this perfect peace. And your family has to know this so they know what's going to happen to you. That they can have peace knowing where you are. Bring your